What's up guys? Really hope y'all enjoyed our last episode. We had a lot of fun. Richard tasked us with building a crazy over the top single cab, short bed, wide body, high horsepower. But as you've seen, we had some difficulties finding a good straight chassis. I mean, we did what, three chassis to finally get one straight. But on this episode, this is when it gets into the true fun part. This is the stuff I like. We're getting in the fabrication and the full custom side of it. We're talking about the wide body, the custom exhaust exits, the spoilers, just everything to make this OBS one of a kind. Top of all this, we want to take a second and really just give a shout out to you guys, the viewers and the fans. Uh, everything that y'all do really helps us keep growing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please lean over and hit the subscribe button. It counts. The more we grow, the more we get to have fun, the longer this can run, the more we all get to enjoy this together. So without further ado, sit back, grab yourself a cold beverage and get you some of this. So Richard gave me a call on Friday saying that he bought another truck. So we got this one and now he wants me to get it tore down because this is the cab that we're using. So we're gonna use this cab and I think we're using the doors off of a different one. We're gonna use the fenders off of this one. Yeah, I mean, out of all 85,000 of these trucks that we have, we're gonna build one. So I got the doors off of this one, and then this is a door that I had off of one of the other ones that was actually in pretty good shape. The old door is, oh, there's one there and one there. Um, but on this, we decided that we were gonna do the typical shave your door handle thing. So deleted the door handle, um, had all that body work done so that it can go on here. I still have some adjustments to do, new pins and bushings, I did all that. But the cool thing we're doing, on this is typically I don't really much care for shaved door handles because you have this big clunky door popper and it's super irritating and annoying but on this one what we're going to do is we're taking parts from a 2024 Corvette and that's how our doors are going to work just like a new vet would which is kind of neat so everything's button actuated um, smooth operation you don't get the big clunk clunk when you open the door and you don't have a bunch of problems with stretch cables and all that. So everything's built into the latch. Uh, looks like it's gonna work, um, but now I just gotta get this lined up and then we start installing that stuff to so make sure that it is good. But so far, we're getting there. Hey everyone, it's Richard Rawlings here. And before we jump back into this build, I wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor, BetterHelp. As we gear up for the stretch right before SEMA, the excitement is real, but so is the pressure. With deadlines looming and projects piling up, it can feel like a lot to handle. That's why I'm thrilled to partner with BetterHelp. They connect you with the licensed therapists who really get it. They offer solid, unbiased advice when you need it the most. When you're an entrepreneur, the hustle is nonstop and the stress can really stack up. I know firsthand how crucial it is to have a reliable support system to help you clear your head and keep you focused. There's absolutely no shame in reaching out for help. BetterHelp makes it simple. Think of therapy as your mental pit stop. It helps you tackle everything from daily stressors to those curveballs that life throws at you. Signing up is a breeze. Visit betterhelp.com slash gasmonkeygarage. Answer a few questions and you'll be matched with a therapist. It's all done online so you can connect via video chat, personal calls, messaging, whatever your lifestyle and schedule suits you best. BetterHelp makes it easy to find the right support, whether you're just feeling overwhelmed, anxious, or just need to chat with someone, they've got your back. And if you find that the first therapist isn't perfect, well, no problem. Switching to someone new is as easy as a quick change in the garage. No extra cost, no hassle, and just the right support for you. So check out betterhelp.com forward slash gas monkey garage, or choose gas monkey garage during the sign up for a special 10% off your first month. Take charge of your mental health and get the support that you need on your terms. Betterhelp.com forward slash gas monkey garage. It's your road to a better you. Well, Mike said he doesn't like the big old conk conk to avoid that. And I have that big conk conk. We're going to do this. So this is out of a 2024 C8. Don't really have the whole system with it, but I have gone in and tested it, done a little bench test and figured out which wires do what. So now we're just gonna mock them up and somehow French them into this door and then put the different striker plate so it can go two and not go What do you think? Do you approve, Mike? So far, I've just got it in there to be able to slide into that little spot and I'll figure it out from there.
So I've got it all in, got the wiring right here, and this is gonna be, it's, it's one of the final tests. I've been mocking around moving the, the striker, but this is how it's gonna be. Nice and clean, no clunk. Let's see what Mike's thinking about the sound. Act like you're pressing a button. Let's hit it. Let's pop the door. A hidden button? Yeah. Oh yeah, that works. It's the nippler. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Shut's good. Yeah, do it again. How can you be mad about that? That's an OE GM part. Yes, and it's going on a GM vehicle. OE GM part, GM vehicle. Man, I don't know how you can go wrong with that. So, you know where we're at right no, now. No, I've been listening. <laughs> I've been listening back there. Um, we got a finite amount of days. Yeah. And I told y'all three days ago that if we were going to do this, you got to make a commitment. So, what do we know that we can pull off and can it be done? Okay. Because everybody's in SEMA crunch right now already. Right. Well, obviously our big ones are our engine, suspension, stuff like that. I've gotten contact with all of them people across the board and they're all down. They can all make the deadline. They're all ready to play ball. So I say we go for it. I mean, we're doing it to ourselves again. You Why does it. everybody want to do this to themselves? Well, last minute, do. oh, we're going to go to SEMA, blah, blah. I was really hoping that y'all might want to take a year off so I can save travel and hotel rooms and per diems and Uber rides and whatever else goes on out there. We got to go to SEMA and we didn't put it off. We've been building a bar in Sturgis. Um, yeah, but that makes money. Going to SEMA is usually just kind of uh, <laughs> showing off. Well, I mean, that goes hand in hand with you, right? Yeah, we have to show off for me you. and Burt Reynolds. We, that's what we do best. <laughs> Uh, okay, if we're gonna go with a lot of power, mm -hmm. that's uh, Texas speed, right? Correct. Okay, so how much power are you thinking? I mean, I told him let's get up over the thousand mark. Let's clear the fifteen. Let, I mean, if if we're taking an OBS to SEMA, then we need to really show up. I mean, don't you agree? It's hard to impress the OBS crowd because pretty much anything and everything you think of has been done. Yeah. So when I was talking to Russell over there, that's what I put him as like. What can we do that's clean steel and not this just monstrosity of a motor and get us up in the, you know, at least four digits. So he's well, I'm, I'd like to be 1500 ish. Yeah. Or better. Okay. So we're single cab dually short bed, short bed. How big is the wheels in the back? Cause I want big, but we're also putting a lot of power down. When we reached reach out to Chris, he said he can do us a 24 by 16 inch wheel, which is actually 17 inches wide. I could hula hoop in that. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, once again, we, we want to make a statement when we show up. We're wanting to do the wide body dually fender -ish. But no air ride, static. Static, well, no, not especially if we're doing big horsepower, we don't want air ride. All right. So on that we also want a low aggressive stance so we can't do 24s all the way around like skid mark we can't get up and over them so we're talking about like a 22 24 stagger which is good looking on those trucks the stagger is good looking that's what i've always heard from your wife two inches makes a difference i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> anyways um seats you got written down on there okay since we're high horsepower we're wanting to do an aggressive look i'm picturing racing seats in there i do not like those big racing seats five point things sticking okay. in the back window so a low back but something i mean it still needs to have a kind it's of got to have bolster yeah in. a race it's got it's got to have a race look i'm still fine with the harnesses i just don't want that stuff sticking up in the back window too far as as little as possibly necessary okay you know we, we, i mean we're from texas why can't we just get in there in a regular seat and wrap the rope around the shifter and ride that thing like a bull. <laughs> it's a big old bench seat. Yeah. Just rope yourself to the shifter like you're getting on a bull and just let her rip, tater chip. <laughs> as much as I like that, <laughs> I don't think it's attractive. We can do something low back, and if not, I mean, I know that we can just cut it down and make it look right, too. I mean, that's not a hard thing to do. We've done that before. Now, is all this stuff available? You've talked to everybody. Hellion yeah. good with the turbos? Ricky's done talk to John and they are more than ecstatic to work with us on this build. Jeez, dude. That's a lot. 
in yeah. a very small amount of time. And this ain't even it. This is we're just starting on the list. So what about what about color? Well, you know we ain't making that decision without you. We have our opinions. Oh, lay it on me. I mean, dude, the way that we have, all of us agreed across the board on this, that that truck would be absolutely insane, just black. I know you like the Audi green. We've ran that one around too, but dude, it's been a that long time. That new 2024 Audi green is right. It, it is wicked, but this truck, it's another Texas truck. It's big horsepower. It's supposed to be mean. And there's nothing meaner than looking over and just seeing something just murdered out across the parking lot, chopping away. I don't know, man. Black just kind of fades into black. That's why they say it at the end of the movie, fade into black. Well. I don't know. Well, you think Because then what one? do you do with the wheels? You leave them polished, brushed, uh, just the lips, not total black there. You're going to, what are we bringing back? Murdered out? Is it going to be murdered out? If we do it, we do it the right way. I don't know what that is. I was always scared of murder. <laughs> Everything. It's hard, man. That's a hard thing to pull off and get a style point. Okay. I also like all white. I ain't never in my life heard that. What? Well, I just, I don't know. For this thing, it just seems right. <laughs> I, I don't even don't, know what to say anymore on that one. I don't white? know, man. Out of your mouth, all white. Let me go work on my super secret project because that's going to make a difference, especially okay. if we go all black. And then uh, y'all get to dialing and spending money. Well, I'm going to give y'all uh, two days and 52 bucks. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. One last question. Are you wanting manual or automatic in this? It's a big decision in this one, especially being high horsepower like you want. I kind of like uh, automatic and okay. maybe even be able to shift through it, you know? So like a built auto with a manual valve body or something? Usually, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's gonna uh, have to be something. If you go bit, with uh, like a 400, yeah with mm -hmm. a, a, a manual valve body where you can shift through it. Okay. If you're getting nasty. I think I like that. I'll call Mike. What and do y'all think? He can throw together. I mean, that look at him. He, he's so speechless. He can't even talk. He's like, <laughs> got a, he's got a boner over there for this automatic truck. Uh, I'm in love with it already. Yeah. And you said, what'd you say? If you want to get nasty? Yeah. Yeah. Check the box. So something really cool with this truck is that we're gonna go wide body with it, but we're not gonna do like your traditional wide body. We're gonna get a little wild with this. Uh, some, you know, open in the front, open in the back, get some air dam looks. Uh, me and Mike kind of threw around a bunch of ideas and landed on some things. So now we're going to start rolling on it. Um, we're talking about working with 3D printing company with them, but at the same time, we wanna have a backup measure. So we're going to wireframe these out and possibly start building some uh, just as a backup plan. So. We're gonna jump in here and see what we can do. Yeah, because right now we got like 60 days, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So, change lots to go. Yeah. Josh got the wireframe basically done for this fender kind of the way he wants it. So now what I got to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to glass this and then I'm going to body work it, which is going to take a long time because it is a rough sketch of kind of what we want. I think we're going to add some kick up and, and some other things to it, but we're going to get basically a prototype done. So I'll body work it, fine tune it get all that done and then we'll send it to our 3D print guys where they can scan it and make us an exact copy for the other side. But right now we're still in beta testing mode. So that's what I got to do today.
right now I'm just trying to add some structure to it. Um, the good thing is this isn't a part we're actually going to use, you know, because there's no way I would allow that. Um, but if I can get it shaped up, then we can get it scanned and we can actually make our, our parts off of it. So, but it's going to take me a while to get this thing shaped up. We did the wireframe, we laid up some glass. Chris and Mike took and sanded this thing down. Chris just shot it with primer. We're gonna 3D scan this thing, get a good 3D model of it, where we can get it sent over to Impact Solutions and they can hopefully pop us out a badass like carbon fiber, lightweight, wide body 3D printed fender. So I, I like this. Yes. And if we're gonna go that crazy, then we need to do it back here too. Okay, so do we chop this out and flatten it and flatten this? because we want to keep this body line or do you want me to just do away with it and remake the whole thing like that one? This point right here, uh -huh. we step away from OBS. Yes. If we're going to step away, then we need to step away because we can't go half a creek, you know, yep. or half a ditch as they say. Okay. So maybe just cut it straight across here and down, mm -hmm. but you're still trying to play OBS materials. Correct. And if we're going to step away, and we're going to have, you know, 1,800-ish, 2,000 horsepower, then we might as well step the hell out, all the way out. Do we want to keep this body line rolling in? Or do we do away with this body line and make this fender like that and, like, just completely do away with that body line? What I would do is I'd follow this body line, but I'd bring it here and turn it out okay. if we wanted to. Or... Do away with it at the body line, just like we're doing here. Okay. And and then shorten all the way up to here, you know, make it stout and up, follow around. And like I, where I put this tape fucking around the other day, mm -hmm. you know, have it at the body line again. Okay. So if we cut this out, maybe do it because I'm building that canard lower skirt. It could pop up there and then to fill just that void, we could do a couple of canards running up in there. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Let's play with it that way. Okay. Um, I would say get some cardboard. Yeah. And let's come up to the wheel like we're doing in the front, mm -hmm. about the same amount of space, follow the body line, mm -hmm. come up more flat like we're doing there, and back, and then end that thing just like we're doing there, five inches back. Yeah. And then the rest of it's all nice and truck painted and done. If we're stepping away from the dually fenders. We're not stepping away. Do we're we still kicking out, but. Do we kick out as far? Do you like that look? This is another reason why we threw it together real quick. Do you like it bulged as far as a dually? Now, obviously that's only a 12 inch wide. Keep it wide. That wide, okay. Keep I mean, it. I like it too. I think it's sick. Keep but. it wide, wide, wide. <laughs> We've had some tweaks and messed around with what Richard was saying, and I'm starting to see it. I think Kenny's starting to see it too. I like where we're landing. There's one thing we're not sure on. The front fender's rolled in the back up there, but we kind of like this 45 look, so we're gonna leave both of them there and see what, you know, let the whole group decide. But uh, our wire frame's landing where we are. We stood back, looks badass. So we're really gonna reinforce it real quick with some more wire and uh, probably tape it up. But I mean, I think it looks very cool. It's aggressive. It's super it's aggressive. It's really aggressive. Imagine, dude, it's just, I mean, it's gonna be nothing but tire from here to here. You're gonna see from the front and the rear, just, I mean, that's, that's solid, like almost eight to 10 inches. The tire is just gonna be hanging out. Like that's, that's rowdy. Yank the bed off so Mike can get rolling more on the wide body fender. And also it allows us some free room to where we can get the rear end put in, um, engine transmission, get a measurement for drive shaft over, just pretty much get the you know the whole drivetrain rolling. So what we're doing right now, 
Chris and I just finished trying to square the cab up on the chassis. And then we tried to find a center point in the firewall for the cab. And now we're working to center the engine as best we can and then get our motor mount location figured out. So we got our badass wizard cooling radiator in and this thing looks like it could cool a Walmart. I mean, this thing is giant. But one problem with that is that we are putting a lot of piping and stuff for our twin turbos. So what I'm gonna do is take and cut back. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but anything we can gain, I'm going to. So I'm gonna cut back, slip a new V-band on here just a little bit further back. They're a little crooked anyway. So we're gonna square them up, slide them back, do a reducer to our Hellion turbos and I mean you can see just try to picture a whole intake turbo all kinds of shit off the front of here so we're gonna try to save as much space as possible get them squared up as best as possible so we'll take us over the table cut that flange off come back over here slide a new one on it get it all squared up weld it up So we got our headers placed where we wanted and our turbos landed exactly where we needed them to. Um, we still got to work out kinks with, you know, where the exhaust is going to go, tur turbo piping and all that stuff. But we had to take a break for a second. We had something really cool show up. And it's crazy because I just ordered this from Australia like, I don't know, two or three days ago I feel like. But I haven't got to see it. You know what's in here. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm excited so, to see this. We're excited to show this one to you guys. There it is. So, with all this big boost, and obviously going to SEMA, we want something super trick, but strong. So, solid billet. Dude, wait. Ricky, have you even seen it yet? No, no. This is gonna be my first time. Dude, our guys over at Plasma Man, when I tell you they knocked this thing out of the park. Look at that intake, bro. God, <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> so, we're set up for uh, oversized billet throttle body. Yeah, yeah. So ready for boost. Dual injectors. Woo! Ready for boost. I'm telling you, this thing is absolutely insane, Ricky. Insane. Oh my god. Well, yeah, we're gonna need our actual LS7 heads, but yeah, we get the gist. God, look at that, dude. The way it's shaped. That's nasty. That's cool. So big shout out to our guys over at Plasma Man. They really hooked us up. Turbo! Boosh! Woo! <laughs> yeah, it works. All right guys, so something really cool about this truck is we've got a quick performance rear end going inside this thing. The amount that it's braced and everything is amazing. These guys really hooked us up. The third member and all the gears and everything. I mean, we got billet housing, all that stuff. And then if you notice, we're missing one thing. The axle itself looks like a freaking Coke can. So I think they've built enough to handle all the power we're gonna be putting down in this truck. We're gonna have a lot of tire on the ground. I mean, we're gonna have a 16 inch patch uh we're gonna have about 2,000 horsepower coming out so we needed something beefy and dude quick performance came through like crazy look at that this is actually a trim down sled pulling axle so we're gonna stab it in here see how it goes and uh man i can't wait i this is freaking exciting take and push the seal in put our c-clip on dude we're good to go see this man that's it <laughs> So, uh, 
I swapped the cab with the bed with Mike so I can start getting um, the rear spoilers and the rear diffuser section going. Kind of got an idea of what we wanted in the diffuser slash exhaust exit. I'm just kind of mocking out what I'm picturing, what everybody else's idea is. We're going to throw down this, let Chris cut it out, and see how it turns out. I kind of like it right now. I think it'll be bitching. Four big old four inch exhausts coming out of here. Some expanded mesh. Uh, kind of set out, you know, real race car inspired, so we'll see. So uh, I got the uh, CAD built up on the first piece. I still got several more pieces I got to make, but Josh wanted me to cut it, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Exhaust exit centerpiece. I'm liking the way it looks. It's pretty cool. It's got some depth, 3D. Uh, the contour landed pretty damn good. Uh, it'll suck in. Let me see. Um, so here's the plan with this. We're gonna go in. We're gonna drill and tap the back side of this. Put some studs in it, and then we'll pop the holes in there. Suck it onto it. Make the outer two, and then it'll look like it's all one piece when it's done. But it'll just give it a lot of depth across it. You know, the exhaust will come through here. Those will be just like mainly for looks, but for a little bit of arrow. But uh, I'm happy with it. You like it? It's a lot different because all the OBS you see with roll pans, it's all the same thing. Yeah, smooth. It's just, <laughs> yeah, just smooth, smooth roll pan. Nothing, so. nothing different. But this is a lot different. Gave it a little look like that new Corvette. Mm -hmm. Might have took some inspiration ah. from it. A little bit. I mean, it is a Chevy. Chevy We're using Chevy. Corvette poppers. Well, once that thing's freaking sprayed and done a little body on it, this thing will be badass. Mm -hmm. All right, well, on to the next one. One thing we really want to do is go onto the tailgate in the bed and make a really sexy spoiler, but also something that really works. So, gonna kind of go over a few different designs in my head, maybe make some different parts move and stuff like that. I do like the part where Mike was talking about every piece moves individually. So I'm going to take, map it out on some cardboard, get it taped to the truck, and uh, kind of go from there. I mean, it's really the only way to do it is throw it on there and then let your mind wonder. Hey, you know, there's actually some portion them are starting to make uh, wow. their race car, their race fenders and stuff out of stuff other than, you know, they're like renewable materials. So I really like how we're heading with this. Renewable resources on our race car. I'm gonna build it out of this cardboard and let Mike just glass over it. Cause renewable poor shit, whatever he said. Cutting some Drift shop, race truck shop, somebody sell something that's already built for this. Do whatever you feel like doing, but it's gotta be done. Well, we got the design down, somewhat what we want. I wanna transfer it to aluminum, sheet, metal, whatever the hell, sheet, middle, sheet, metal, whatever we're gonna do. I'm not gonna buy a plastic wing. You know damn well, as much as I do, that if we bolt a plastic wing on the back of here, we're gonna receive hell for that. He's just trying to get under my skin. And you know, like we always say, built, not bought especially in Amazon wing.
through about three different setups. This is what I've come up with. I really like it. Uh, it's bulky, kind of got some flow here and there, different contours, different curves. Uh, it looks really good on the truck. So now it's time to duplicate it on the other side. And I can tell you right now, that's the hardest part. <laughs> So I got the last little bit of fab done on the wings. Uh, I got to do some body on them, but overall, the, the way it looks, the shape, everything is really symmetric. It looks badass. Got the exhaust cut out in. Uh, man, four, four and a half inch carbon fiber tips gonna be coming out of that. The whole back of this is just gonna be mean as hell, especially with them big old freaking wide tires coming out. So now this is done. Uh, we got some tail lights coming. Those are a secret. Mike's got a good head start on the cab and chassis. Now it's time to get the bed over there and nail Richard down on a color. I know what me and Mike and everybody want. We want black. But outside of that, we got some really excited news. Next week, we go to pick up our engine, bro. I cannot wait. Texas Speed hooked us up massive. I can't wait to see it. This thing's gonna be a monster. Uh, Richard's got some kind of surprise that we're gonna pick up while we're down there. Uh, I don't really know what it is, but I'm kind of excited to hear about that. Uh, impact systems have let us know that they're rolling on our fenders. Hopefully those will be ready next week. Dude, this truck has got some freaking traction. So thank you all for following along and uh, continue to follow along with us. And let's see how this truck turns out.